apologize ahead of time for the wind. It's pretty windy here today, but this is my last chance to get a video of this before the customer picks the truck up. So I'm going to give a detailed view of everything we had to do to accomplish this swap. So first thing I want to note, note is there's no hood scoop. The customer is going to be adding that. So this works great um, till the, the engine bay gets heat soaked and then you can actually feel how hot this gets. So a hood scoop is going to help for sure uh, for the longer drives. For short commutes though I actually don't notice the heat soak. You can tell this is doing an awesome job just while it's cold. So we'll start over here on the right side. Um, I don't have the cover for this, that's why that's bare. But we were able to pull the 3VZE harness out completely and just run one wire for the starter. And if you want to have air conditioning, you'd run that wire as well. But in this case, he didn't have the AC components, so um, just that one wire for the starter is it. And then a wire coming through for the windshield wiper motor. And then these two plugs come through this fender. Go in there. We have tucked back underneath here, we have our fan controller. I'm still working on adjusting the, the thermostatic control for that. So I have the windshield wiper reservoir, the fluid reservoir taken out right now, but that fits in here nicely. So there's the wire for the, the fluid. And then here we have our probe for our thermostatic control. There we have one electric fan. We're likely going to have to install a second fan, which will fit nicely right down here. So this is an aluminum aftermarket radiator from Amazon. It's about 150 bucks. And the only modification required was this tube it was angled kind of like this. So I cut it off and shortened it a little bit and welded it back on straight. And I've seen some V6 radiators with a straight inlet and some are angled. So it's got to be straight and then this hose fits really nice to the engine. So here's our water temp sensor. Um, radiator hose wise. We've got our other hose over here, it attaches to the oil pan. And then we have the factory overflow tank. Turbocharger wise, this is a 44 millimeter HX30. So I actually welded a cap on the intake manifold for the EGR. I welded the port shut, and the reason I have two pieces here is I wanted more thickness of material so I could tap that for a eighth inch NPT boost port for my gauge. So then we get a tube welded in the middle um, for better air distribution evenly to all the ports and it just fit really nicely with this intercooler so the compressor elbow shoots into a straight and we have a straight coupler and this is a 45 and we've got a 90 here and then i just bought a polished two and a half inch 90 degree elbow and welded that to the the manifold And then I just simply 
welded a mount to the side of the intercooler to bolt to the valve cover. So here for the turbo we have our oil pressure regulator and I will be offering a bracket to bolt this in and that will fit the 80s and early 90s Toyotas and it should fit even the late 90s early 2000s Tacomas and Forerunners. Then down here it's tucked in there we have our oil catch can So that is connected to the the PCV um, breather on the valve cover. So that just collects those fumes, separates them, and then lets them condensate in this jar down here. So we can remove that jar during our oil changes and empty that out. There's also the option to attach a hose to our downpipe down here, and it'll actually put a bit of a vacuum on the crankcase to help reduce our crankcase pressures, and it'll get the uh, gases flowing better. It might even help suck some of them out and shoot them out while you're driving. So for the oil drain, you can just barely see it right down there. This turbo fit directly onto our oil drain that came with this motor. So that part worked out really easy. We have a T3 spacer, which you can see right there. And then you can see our downpipe a three inch down pipe and it fit pretty nicely we have our nice big Donaldson air cleaner housing with a flexible tube to feed into our turbo and then lastly for the turbo the oil comes through a braided AN hose And that's, that's fed through that hose right there coming out of the oil filter relocator. So now we'll work our way to the left side. And I replaced a radiator hose and we also discovered the, the old oil fill cap was not sealing at all. So everything's covered in oil and coolant, but we know why so it's about 10 degrees here right now so I'm not not gonna be washing it right this second so I have a newer version of the doomsday battery tray which allows uh, fitment nice and tight up against the overflow tank It's a short run from the alternator to the battery, which is really nice. Got our power steering pump down in here. We are not using a fluid cooler, but if one ever needs to be utilized, we can actually go down there to the radiator and use the transmission cooler to cool our power steering fluid. Yes, I realize there's four white wires coming out of this, but they actually get uh, spliced to the factory harness right here. So we have basically a factory connection. You got your, uh, your red, your yellow, and your white that connected to the Toyota alternator. Those tie right into this plug and it works perfect. You start the key and it starts charging. We have over 100 amps output at idle. And then the fourth wire is a tachometer. Um, tachometer signal output. So that gets plugged into a Dakota digital device that um, translates that signal 
into a usable output for the Toyota TAC. So our factory tachometer will work. So this has the longer V6 throttle cable. You can actually get a replacement from ATP that's shorter and fits a little bit nicer. But it it works great. The travel of the pedal matches the travel of this mechanism perfectly. There you can see our oil pressure sending unit and then that's our oil or our oil filter there and then it goes over to the thermostat and then the cooler is tucked up along the frame rail you want to make sure you use this cigar hose it helps smooth out the injection pump and then on this truck we actually ran new fuel lines right up on this side of the firewall so we have real short runs of rubber hose. Lastly, for the wiring, we installed an 80 amp breaker for the glow plugs. This is really nice if you want to crank the engine over without firing it, because if you have glow plugs um, that are working, it's gonna really make the engine want to start. So all we gotta do is push this button now the glow plugs are unhooked, so when we went to prime the oil system, we could crank this over without the glow plugs and get our oil pressure built up. And same thing when we installed the turbo, we could crank oil through the system, get oil pressure, and then all you do is push this back down. So it's not a fuse, it's a breaker, so if you ever have a wire chafe through or something shorts to ground this will just pop and then you just reset it this is the doomsday what i call a wiring harness it's a relay box for the start up and shut down and this is the factory mercedes glow plug controller so i Installed some weld nuts with the fender off, welded those to the side, so some of these screws are using factory weld nuts, but some of them I added. But it cleans up the fender very nicely. As for the vacuum, the vacuum is actually not completed yet. We're waiting for a vacuum solenoid to arrive. The vacuum line comes through here, snakes underneath. I've got a splitter. Vacuum comes up to your brake booster. And then there's a line here for the um, the shutoff solenoid and then these wires here power that solenoid so there it is the OM617 and a 91 Toyota pickup that had a 3VZE thanks for watching